Welcome back. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the crazy turbulent bond markets, huge big tech cutbacks, and what infamous investor Stanley Druckenmiller thinks is going to happen in the market next. Now this is Stanley Druckenmiller. He is a fund manager and has outperformed the market with 30% returns for over 20 plus years. Now this is a recent interview of him being asked on what he thinks will happen in the market in the next coming months. I will be stunned if we don't have a recession in 23. Don't know the timing, but certainly by the end of 23, I will not be surprised if it's not larger than the so-called average garden variety. And I don't rule out, not my forecast, but I don't rule out something really bad. Why? Because if you look at the liquidity situation that has driven this, um, we're going to go from all this QE to QT. We're following an asset bubble. Um, we've been doing all this uh, running down on the SBR, which is now, that's the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It's now below 84 levels, even though obviously oil consumption is much higher. Um, we've had a bunch of myopic policies that have actually delayed the liquidity shrinkage. QT has been almost entirely offset by Janet Yellen running down the Treasury savings account. By the way, pretty amazing policy. She could have sold 10 years for under 1% during this time. Instead, she runs down the Treasury savings account. So all that has masked the liquidity shrinkage, but it really comes into full gear. And she can continue this for a while. We can do the SPR for a while stimulative stuff, but by the first quarter of 23, it kind of goes the other way. So our central case is a hard landing by the end of 23, but I don't know. The, I've been wrong on a lot of things. I could be wrong on this, but since I do it for a living, that's our forecast, which is a recession in 23. Now, Druckenmiller lays out the bear case for the market pretty clearly. He said that because of the easy money policies and the asset bubble that it's created, there is still more room to fall and the economy may deteriorate continuously for the next six to 18 months. He has also been on record recently saying that a depression is not out of the picture, but it is not his base case by any means. He believes it is only still a slight possibility. Now he says this at the same time that Apple has announced lower expectations for iPhone 14 sales. Apple is also requiring their employees to come in at least three days a week and has threatened to fire them if they don't. Now many employees have chose to just quit, and so that lowers the costs and expenses that Apple has and it seems by design. We also have Meta and Google doing so-called quiet layoffs, with Mark Zuckerberg saying that there is massive restructuring ahead for Meta. There's also some news out of England, where the Bank of England had to step in and buy long-dated bonds off the free market, even though they've been very forward about shrinking their balance sheet, which shows just how dire the situation was and how much liquidity was needed to sustain the markets. Now, because of that, the US saw a brief rally in the middle of the week, with speculation that the US Federal Reserve might actually come in and do the same thing to support the markets. But that was short-lived, as the Fed continues to set further expectations of tightening. The situation in England was so bad, though, that a London banker said, at some point this morning, I was worried this was the beginning of the end. He goes on to say, it was not quite a Lehman moment, but it was close. Referring to 2008 and 9, when Lehman Brothers went completely out of business because of the financial crisis. Now this news came after new tax cuts were announced in England, which resulted in a massive bond sell-off, spurring this drastic intervention. Since then, the pound has also taken a steep dive along with many other currencies besides the US dollar. This is a graph of how international currencies have been moving in the past year, and shows how consequential these interventions by central bankers have been, and how destructive to international trade they are. Now, what does all of this news and movement in the bond market mean for us? Well, as the Federal Reserve has shown great conviction on wanting to tackle inflation within the U.S., we should expect the federal funds rate to continue to climb for the next few months, which will increase the yields on the bond and subsequently devalue current bonds. Now, with increasing yields on the horizon, you may think, well, I should just hide in the stock market away from all of this bond market trauma. Well, with increasing bond yields, that brings the risk-free rate upwards, meaning that the government has deemed treasury notes as risk-free. Now, if you believe that the Federal Reserve will continue to increase rates over the next few months, which will bring bond yields up and the stock market down, then you may want to hide in cash for the time being. Now, another option for those who believe that the strain and destruction that the Federal Reserve is imposing on the markets is unsustainable and that they will eventually capitulate and start to expand their balance sheet may want to flee to safe haven assets like Bitcoin or gold 
to take advantage of that ever-expanding fiat system. And although I still believe that stocks may have more room to fall, there will be companies that will succeed in this environment, and it'll most likely be the ones that have good return on capital and have little to no debt, among many other characteristics that make a good company to invest in. I am not selling all of my stocks, and I'm not taking everything out of the bank and putting it into Bitcoin and gold, but I am being more conservative with the way that I am investing in this period of time. And remember, this is just what I'm doing with my portfolio, which has a 20 plus year time horizon. But I believe it is so important to stay hedged in a time where central bankers run rampant and manipulate markets freely. You need to prepare for many different situations in order to preserve your capital over time. So with that being said, please do your own research and invest with your own risk tolerances in mind. And remember, I'm just some random guy on YouTube trying to give you the news and what I'm doing with my portfolio. So make your own decisions, be smart, and pay off a lot of your high interest debt as soon as possible. Now with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw and you got any value out of this, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. And I'll see you in the next one.